Hi, in this video I would like to talk a little bit about Unreal Engine's reflection captures. My name is Mai, I'm a technical artist uh, working in the industry with Unreal Engine. Uh, that being said, I'm not a developer from Epic Games, so the information I'm presenting here will be a combination of Unreal Engine's documentation and the uh, research and uh, tests that I conducted myself. Uh, so if anything becomes in, uh, inaccurate or out of date, please uh, leave it in the comment section below and let me know. I would like to apologize ahead of time that because of my mic setup, uh, you will be hearing my keyboard sounds, so I'm <laughs> sorry about that. Oh, okay, what you see here is a test scene that I set up. Uh, there's lighting, and I break the light, and the, the, th the black things in front of you is a material I set up to be 100% specular and 100% metallic, so it's like a mirror. Uh, it's like a perfect mirror, uh, and that's why you don't see anything on it, because we haven't uh, enabled any reflection. So Unreal Engine has several ways of handling reflections. What is on by default is uh, screen space reflection, which I turned off right now. I can, if you want to turn it on, just go to the show flag here, and go under to find the uh, lighting features and turn it on. Screen screen space reflection, and you can see over here. Um, what we'll be talking about mainly today uh, is the other two kinds. Um, if you go to the modes and just type reflection, box reflection and sphere reflection capture, um, they are different from screen space in that they are baked, so they get pre calculated before you run the game, so they almost have no performance impact in runtime. Planar reflection is a different um, beast, <laughs> it has very good quality. Uh, it's a bit like screen space reflection, it's calculated in real time. That's why I'm not talking about that uh, in this video, it's, it's quite a different process. Yeah, planet is, is better than screen space reflection in some cases, um, and it's also more expensive. Uh, so, now let's um, bring on the reflection. I have some probe here I prepared. Look at this one. So. You'll see a difference that the uh, spheres and cubes around the scene are chrome-like, and by the reflection, they are like clay color. That is because on real reflection capture, we only capture the uh, diffuse component. So that's what you see over here. So what how it works in general is that this is the this is the probe, and it will see the environment around it, and it will project what it sees back to the reflective surfaces surrounding it. However, that, I found that a little bit vague just by that description and uh, Unreal recommends you to place the reflection probes strategically across your scene. That means that it, it will be helpful to understand how they actually work and to have some kind of maybe geometric understanding of how light ray bounces around and get reflected and um, projected in this particular use case. So I would like to just imagine if you're a person standing at the place where this probe is and you take a 360 photo around you. And once you have the photo, what you do is basically you see this, the big orange outline tracing out a sphere. And you, you take that photo and project it into the inside of this sphere. So that's kind of like a small skybox here using the data that you took from this point. Um, that's basically how it works. And to get reflection to your surface, you can understand it in this way. So it's like a mirror, and you look into this mirror, and this is my camera here, you turn it down. So this is how the light ray goes. It looks into this mirror and it bounces back. And to find a point in this reflection skybox, quote unquote, to find the pixel that's got stored there, baked there, basically. Um, yeah, that's what it does. It, it's the same with the box reflection as well. It just, the sky box is, is a box instead of a sphere. But it's still does the same thing, uh, where, for instance, there will be a light coming out of here, touching this edge, projecting onto the surface, touching this edge, projecting onto the surface, and between those will be what it sees. So um, it has a line of sight, and limitation, which is, I'll, I'll address that in a little bit. Uh, first question would be, what happens if if some reflective surface goes out of the radius? And I'll grab this, 
this one. And I'll just basically move it. It just become black. It will, it will receive no data. So in order for surfaces to get the data of a particular reflection probe, reflection capture, you have to make sure that surface is inside this sphere of influence. Uh, so next question will be, does the sphere only see things inside its influence? No, it doesn't. It actually sees pretty much infinitely. So let me turn on the actual skybox here. And what I'd like to point out is when you update the environment, that basically means that you have to take a new 360 photo because the, the probe doesn't update itself. So you go to the build and click on build reflection captures. It's usually pretty fast. Now it's up to date. All right. So yeah. Um, whereas you need to put the surface receiving the projection inside the sphere of influence, the probe itself actually can see anything, you can see things outside. Um, now there is the line of sight issue I was talking about earlier. So if I'm using this um, probe's data, I'm looking at the surface from the back side. So what I'm seeing here is actually the reflection of this cube itself. This cube is seeing himself in, in this um, in one side, which is very unrealistic, but um, it is consistent to how it works. So basically, you got the projection of this face onto this part of the sphere. And the data is over here, and if you do a lookup on this surface, you bounce back, and what you see will be this front face. So you see the front face and the back face. But so it's important to understand how it works. And um, in my second video, I will kind of talk about how this can be problematic in some times. If you have, you basically let your reflection leak into a surface that you don't want it to. So you need to be, be careful about that one. Um, something you need to pay attention is that reflection captures with a box or sphere, they have a lot of distortion. Unreal does handle parallax. Um, however, because is that it's a very small skybox here. I mean, talking about the uh, reflection skybox. Um, that means the geometry may make the, the data distorted when you look it up on, on surfaces. So this one, for example, this sphere is pretty much on the same height as my capture probe. Therefore, the reflection is pretty good. But if I move up, I'm looking at the sphere high up here. That is not a good representation of what you realistically will be seeing. Therefore, if we use um, a probe that's captured at a higher point, you get a better result. See the comparison? So there's this general rule of thumb in, in gameplay that you want to put your probe where your player can see it, and around the same height as your player's eye. And depends on how you how your characters travel in the game, so that we'll see a better reflection. Um, next thing I want to address would be if we're using the box reflection. Question is, what's going to happen if I make this box longer in the y-axis, this green axis? Do you imagine the reflection will become? bigger or smaller. Uh, I was actually surprised the first time. They understand why. So if I make it further, it actually becomes bigger. Uh, what I found a bit, a little bit counterintuitive is that if I bring back, because I'm sampling the data from these outside boundary boss, boundary edges. So this is this is my camera. This I'm looking at this face. If I'm moving, that's where I'm sampling my data. If I'm moving that closer to my lookup face, it will make sense that they appear bigger. But when I push the y-axis scale of the ref reflection box longer, it seems that oh they're getting further. Why is things still become bigger? That's because if you if you imagine the tongue. 
the visibility cone that covers this it's like a white v-shaped cone that covers this sphere projected to the back um, the, the, the more elongated this cube is they end up it did end up projected onto a bigger area uh, if you take a pen and pencil and draw you find out like the further far, further back you go the bigger area it is relative to this so that's why it becomes bigger all right um, one, one last thing I want to show you about distortion so I'm looking at this face I'm using a sphere projection so kind of like what I'm doing is like the eye goes here and bounce back and seeing this guy so if I sorry if I make my sphere bigger you'll see the, uh, the reflection of these this, this spheres move to the right uh, the question is how far is it gonna move um, if you think about the geometry the answer is it, it will move as far as the middle point because if this sphere is infinitely big and the data point we're sampling is projected because this is the the, cam the, the 360 camera position like we, when the probe originally take the photo it, it is projected over here and if this sphere is infinitely big it's just gonna be like somewhere here in the middle so we can test that see it's just dripping right in the center cool um, next thing I want to talk about it's kind of it's, a, it's an interesting topic it's an influence fall off so the sphere reca capture doesn't give you any indication of where the fall off is so I kind of have to figure that out myself so this is the result basically this is the outer boundary and um, within the 60% of the radius is actually the area where you get a full opaque reflection and from 60 to 100 there's a 40 percent range where the reflection data will basically fade out to transparent um, demonstrate, demonstrate here if we bring this bring this right in you see that it's becoming transparent I think the floor is becoming transparent too So yeah, be aware of the fade out area. It's different from the cube because cube has something called, um, sorry, the box, called box transition distance. The box transition distance, uh, it can be easily understood as the box transition distance is where the fade out is, but it actually it's not exactly the case. The, uh, the full influence threshold is actually in the 50% of that transition distance. So it doesn't fade from, from this point to that point, it fades from the middle point. Um, if your transition distance for this case is 100, that means you get um, 50 units where you fade. Cool. Um, now, I just want to show you kind of how I found it out. And uh, you can also, in the future, if something changed, you can do this test yourself too and kind of figure out why and where the boundary is. So this cube here, is uh, located at um, 400 in the wide distance and the cube itself is 100 uh, wide therefore this face and we're looking at right now in the wide distance is at 450 so what we're trying to find out where should we how big should we set our spherical radius so that this face will be solid so basically like that if this is the face where is this guy um, what you do is you try to take, sorry, um, take that value divided by 60%. That's the number you get, 750 in relation to 450. Uh, if I bump this value up, let me make it more obvious. If I bump this value up, it's going to be still solid. If I bring it down less than 750, it will start to fade. It's not very obvious here, but I can show you it, it actually is precisely that value. 
This is how we find out. So under the um, window developer tool, I'm not sure if you can see me in the drop-down menu, but under there, there is something called the pixel inspector. I already grabbed it here. So if I, that basically tells you the, uh, the colors and luminance of the pixels on your screen. So right now, the center point, the center point of our, of our face here is about, it's around 800, 400, I'm just gonna type it here. And uh, I want you to pay attention to the numlens value over here. I'm gonna go around. If I bring this value up, then numlens basically stays the same. They change a little bit because um, the the thing went back a little bit, but it's around. 0 0.023 but if I bring it back bring it down and basically bring this face into the fading range it starts to bump up yep basically that's that's how you do the test same thing for um, the cube same way you can test that using pixel inspector but yeah, uh, I think that's a fairly accurate value that you're using. I don't, I don't know why it's maybe the document somewhere. Maybe I didn't find it, but it's not apparent on the uh, on their website. Uh, overlaps. Overlaps is an issue where you have several um, spheres of influences overlapping each other, and what the pixel didn't do is that. In general, it's, it's called it's gonna interpolate it, but it's not really interpolation. What will happen? Let me show you. Is that say if a pixel is, I have two probe here that's influencing this. Oh, I jumped out of my camera. Hmm. So both of them has currently has a 400 radius. Oh, this one doesn't. So you get two copies of reflection. It's from either of them, either of them, and they get kind of added on top of each other. It's not like additive. It's more like one just sits on top of another. And if they have the same radius, the who sits on who, it's kind of random. But as soon as one of them becomes smaller than the other, even by a little bit, the smaller one will take over. So let's see, the, the left one currently is at the back. If we bring this value down to 399.5, it moves up, see that? So the general rule of thumb is that if a pixel is inside the influence of several radiuses or box, then the smallest one will have its uh, reflection printed on top, on, at the very top. However, um, some kind of fading can still happen. So this is this is a case where this pixel is within both spheres, 60% fully opaque influence. So I'm gonna show you over here. We have the box and we have this one. We have the sphere. They, I'll show you this too. That's, not, that's kind of their relationship. And um, if I bring this down, and bring this face basically into the fading area, you will see that the, um, the smaller reflection basically coming from the sphere is still sitting on top, but it becomes translucent. You can see through the back. So now at the, in this instance, the, the pixel color is actually blending together. Other times, one of just, just on top. Uh, there is a way where they will actually blend, blend the color instead of occluding is if you use cube maps, um, Unreal has a documentation on how exactly that works, and I, I, I won't cover it in this video. I think in general, the um, placement strategy they recommend is to have a hierarchical placement. So if you have a room, you put um, a very big radius probe in the center of the room to kind of cover everything, then put some medium uh, radius probes to cover 
individual rooms that's divided. Uh, the, you need tiny radius ones to capture the details. Like if if this is this sphere here is an important prop in my environment, and my probe is somewhere over there, it's very far from it, not at its, not at its level, it's, it would get a very distorted reflection. So because it's important, I'm just going to put like a small um, probe right here. So just influencing this guy and then give you better results. Performance wise, when it basically scales like, it's kind of like light. So for each pixel on the screen, it counts, it counts how many, um, how many reflection captures is that pixel inside. So if the, the more um, overlying layers, the higher the cost, that's basically how it works. But when you're doing a hierarchical order, you don't kind of bring it down to, if you just have a high, medium and low, at any given point, you have at most three. But it depends, depends on your usage. Uh, final thing I wanna mention is that there are some ways to give you better reflections if you if, if you have a perfectly smooth surface, you want better reflections. One is in the project setting. If you do a project setting, go to the rendering tab and uh, under the optimi optimi optimization, sorry, category and the G-buffer format, change that to high precision normals. The other thing you need to do is grab your mesh. Um, just grab this default mesh over here. And in the LOD, under the build settings, you t ch check this use high precision tangent basis. That's its full name, high precision tangent basis. That give you the better result. Okay, and that's pretty much wraps up um, this first part. In the second part, I will talk about how to and the use cases in an actual scene and how to place them, how to make uh, my kind of my decisions and my process and my mistakes. Uh, this is unlearned. I do recommend reading up on Unreal's documentation. Um, there's a page called Reflections and another one called Reflection Environment. Both both those two pages are very good. I'll provide the link to them in the description. Uh, yep, yeah, that's it for part one. Thank you for tuning in. I think you might have run a little bit longer than I expected.